Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for taking the time to view this video. This is kind of acting in place of our usual parent-athlete tryout meeting. Um, and we know that there's a ton of uncertainty going on in the world right now. And our hope is to be able to proceed with cheer uh, as soon as we can do so safely. Um, so kind of how it works is we're in close communication with our athletic director and these updates from the district regarding kind of next steps and how to navigate all of this uncertainty. Um, so our process that our program will follow is always gonna be um, the district and the state standards. Um, but we hope that you've all kind of had some time to read through the packet and kind of what a normal year of cheer would look like. I know that some things are going to be different, but um, this is kind of going to be a reinforcement of when we're able to kind of pick up and proceed as normal, this is kind of just going to talk through what it's going to look like and also provide some new updates that we do have at this time. I also wanted to share that there is a mandatory Google form that's going to be emailed out to all of you. Um, so we ask that you just kind of take the time to complete this form together. It just grabs some basic information um, from both the cheer candidate as well as your parent or guardian. Um, and there's a spot at the end of that form where you can ask any additional questions that you have after watching this video. Um, and usually the parent meeting um, in person is just you get a five point uh, score, five out of five points to put towards your tryout score um, if you attend it with a parent. So in kind of this shift that we're making, this Google form and watching this video is going to give you a a, an additional five points to your tryout score just for completing it. Um, so really important, we please ask that you do take some time, even if you don't have any questions. And I guess before we really jump into the packet itself, I wanted to formally introduce myself. Um, my name is Mackenzie Merrill and I am the head coach of Inglemore Cheer. This is my third season with the program. I started out as the assistant um, my first year and then I took over as head coach last year and I'm really excited to be continuing um, with this program for another season. I um, actually am a Bothell High School alumni. I graduated from there in 2013, um, and, but I can't say I'm a proud Viking now. And then I went on to study event management at uh, Central Washington University where I got my bachelor's degree in 2017. Um, and in terms of my cheer background, I did cheer for a bit in high school and a few years before that also. Um, but I also dedicated quite a bit of my time in high school to coaching a junior high team um, through the Bothell Junior Cheer Program. Um, so I was a coach for two football seasons and two competitive uh, seasons as well. And that's kind of where I found my passion for coaching. Um, and when I returned back home to college, this opportunity kind of presented itself and I jumped right at it and I'm so happy that it worked out. And kind of why I love cheer is um, for me personally, it's kind of the only sport that's ever clicked. Um, and I love that it's so much more than your typical sport. And the leadership aspect has got to be my all time favorite piece. Just getting to work with the both the school and the local communities to help create this positive space is huge for me and I love that we're able to kind of get back in different ways and um, specific to the Inglemore program I love the family aspect that comes with um, joining cheer for sure um, so I want to let my assistant introduce herself as well hi my name is Jen Ross and um, a little bit of my background um, I have been a registered nurse for 17 years and then left nursing and wanted to find something totally just different, separate, but that's something that was fun. And I think I landed in a good place. Um, I really enjoyed coaching with Mackenzie. Um, this will start my second season with um, Inglemore High School, but it uh, I started mid-season last year, so I only got to cover basketball season. So I'm excited to start in with, hopefully starting with football season this, this upcoming year. Um, prior to that, I worked with Inglemore Junior Cheer. I was their um, co-president for two years, and then I helped coach uh, varsity for one year. I have two kids. Uh, they both will be going to Inglemore High School this year. My daughter will be a freshman, and my son will be a junior. And I just really have enjoyed being a part of Inglemore Cheer. I just really love the fact that this is a higher skill level that these girls are motivated, they're independent, and they're just a lot of fun to be around. So I'm very excited to 
start our second season. And although it's going to look different, I am really positive and hopeful that we're going to have the best season yet. So. Yes, and um, I'm really excited to have Jen as well. My first year, I kind of took it on by myself, and having Jen join the family has been like the best thing. So we're both super excited to continue working together um, in this program. And before we kind of touch on all of the different big pieces uh, that come with our season, we kind of wanted to start out with this little statement here um, and just say that it's an, a huge honor to be a cheerleader and it's not just an honor of skill, but also one of character. Um, and being a part of this team in short summary means that you are one of the most visible representatives of Inglemore. You're representing not just yourself, but you're also representing your team, your peers, your classmates, um, the entire Inglemore community. And um, in addition to that, there is this huge family aspect that comes with our program. Um, there's going to be a ton of great friendships that are formed along your along your journey here. Um, and you're also going to learn so many skills that are not just applicable to life right now, but that you can also take with you beyond high school. Um, and just a few are like time management, discipline, hard work, conflict resolution, um, and so many other things as well. And as the coaches of this program, we are committed to providing an atmosphere where the girls are going to be constantly growing, um, along with kind of guiding them and helping them reach their physical goals. We are equally invested in helping them mature as individuals as well. Um, so with that being said, I kind of, I'm going to have Jen jump into what should already be completed at this point and what the pre-trial expectations are. Yeah, so at this point, all the athletic paperwork um, you have the packet. So everything we've asked you to complete so far um, has just been getting us with teacher recommendations and then um, also sending us your videos. So a couple of other things we want you to make sure that you're still focusing on is that you also must have a current physical on file with us in order to attend tryouts. So although we don't quite know when tryouts are yet, we do know that you are gonna have to have a current physical. So please make sure if you haven't done that to schedule your appointment with your doctor um, and get that done prior to. It does need to be valid through March of 2021, so it will be good for two years, but make sure that you get that done. Um, the other thing is um, in your application packet, um, the most recent update that we've sent out, you may or may, may, or may not have heard yet, is that um, McKenzie has reached out to the administrators at the different schools, at the two middle schools and the high school. So we're taking care of that portion for you. So on page two, where it tells you you need to gather signatures from the administrators, talking about whether you had school fines, whether there was any school discipline, um, your unofficial transcript, all of those things, we're gonna be collecting that on your behalf. So you can cross that off on page two. You don't need to go and get that done. But in that, please make sure that if you sent out teacher recommendation or teacher recommendation forms over the Google, um, form that we sent you, please make sure that they have done that. So if you touch base with them or just send them a quick email saying, hey, have you completed that? That would be great. Um, we want to make sure that you understand that with your transcript, even though that we're going to obtain your unofficial transcript, um, there is a GPA standard. So there's a 2.8 cumulative GPA and a 2.0 current, meaning that your current classes need to be at least a 2.0. Your overall all the classes that have gone towards graduation need to have an accumulative of 2.8. Um, the other thing is that if you haven't emailed us your uh, video interview, make sure that you have done that as well. And it needs to go to both Mackenzie and my email from the NSD. So make sure that you're sending those emails to us um, with your link. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. We'd love to just get to know you as you, who you are, especially for the new girls coming in. Let us know you know, your likes and, and a little bit about yourself and let your personality show in the video, but it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Reminders that can't be stressed enough. So these are things we just want to kind of drill in a little bit more. One is just complete all the required steps that we just mentioned, but make sure to go back through your form, your, your cheer uh, packet and go through and make sure you've done everything. Because There's lots of little steps, lots of information in there, but make sure that you're following that and you've done it all. Start preparing now. Um, we can't stress enough. As soon as we get that green light to go ahead with tryouts, we want to go ahead and hold tryouts. And we don't want someone to say, oh, I, I haven't started my jumps, or oh, I haven't been stretching like I should have been, or oh, I used to be so much more flexible. So make sure that you're prepping right now. Uh, we are using a Google Classroom. So parents, if you haven't heard from your daughters, we do have a Google Classroom that we have included everybody who signed up on final forms, who is 
you know, our mind going to be tried out for cheer. Um, we put everybody into a Google Classroom. So this is a way for us to stay connected, to post videos, to post information about tryouts and just different things that we want you to be focusing on. So there's going to be videos and resources in there for you to take a look at and to utilize. Make sure that you're stretching, working on your jumps again. Really want to emphasize, emphasize that. And then prepare now because, again, once we get that okay to hold tryouts, we'll let you know. But there may not be like a huge window of time prior to that. So make sure you're, you're happy with where your jumps and stretches are. Um, and then again, 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 schedule that physical with your doctor if you haven't done so. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm kind of going to next shift into kind of the commitment expectations. And um, I know, I don't know if I touched on this before, but um, all of the dates, I know it's mentioned in the welcome letter that was attached um, to that digital copy of the packet. All of the dates are, of course, kind of pending, depending on where we're at um, in terms of phases and things starting to open up. Um, so this is kind of just going to touch on what a normal season would look like, as well as, again, I'll put in those updates where I have them at this time. Um, so in terms of practices during the school year, uh, we typically hold them two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We also have um, a, quite a few summer practices that are mandatory. That's where you learn the bulk of everything that you're gonna take with you into um, football season. So our Jen and I's kind of goal, we've talked about this quite a bit, is that many of the listed dates, we still wanna use those. So any of those dates that were outlined in the original packet, although they may not be used for the same things, we still really wanna try and use as many of those as possible because um, we know that many of you probably have already kind of blocked them out on your calendars for the summer. Um, and just to kind of run through those dates, the first kind of week that's important that I still wanna use is the week of July 20th through the 24th. And that was originally going to be uh, set aside for a practice week or a prep week before we head to camp. Camp updates will be um, a bit later, but we still wanna be using that week for either practices or a tryout if possible, um, just depending on the time of timing of everything. Um, and then that following week, which is July 27th through the 31st, when we will be going to our Central Washington University camp, um, I'm hoping to also use this week for practices, whether it be right after tryout week or um, maybe we'll have to hold tryouts then. Again, I just want to keep that uh, week and put it to use if possible. Then jumping forward to August, um, starting on August 17th, we have practices every Monday through Friday until the first day of school, which I believe is September 2nd this year. Um, Again, this is what the time will be used for as well. Um, and I'm also kind of hoping that we can put in a different camp option um, in that August time frame too. Again, we'll see. Um, but in addition, in between kind of that break uh, at the end of July and August 17th, I would also, Jen and I have talked about the idea of sprinkling in some optional practices that girls can just kind of, it's not mandatory, but if you want to come and work on, maybe bring your stunt group and work on stunts or come and uh, get some feedback on jumps or work on material, we just kind of want to open it up and make it just offer that um, extra kind of room for uh, more practice. And Jen and I would always be there, of course, again, depending on the standards and everything, but that's kind of another hope of ours as well. Jumping into game schedule. So during football season, we typically just have a Friday night football game. Um, sometimes uh, last season, we had quite a few Thursday games. I don't foresee us having that many this year, but TBD, um, you can plan for at least a few Thursday nights in there as well. Um, and then during basketball season, we have games on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So on those Tuesday and Wednesday games, we split the team in half and half will go Tuesday, half will go Wednesday and everybody will cheer um, Friday games. So that's kind of how that works. And in terms of what kind of a normal cheer week looks like, it's we try to keep it at a three day per week commitment. So during football season, what that looks like is a Tuesday practice, a Thursday practice and a Friday game for the most part. And then basketball, we've got, like I said, the half team Tuesday, half team Wednesday, Full team practice Thursday, full team cheering on Friday. 
Um, and like I said, it's typically a three day per week commitment. And I really want to try and stick to that as much as we can just to keep that balance. Um, but sometimes we do have other commitments such as um, we do little bike cheer camps. We do, we go support tons of other different sporting events. Um, try to spread those out as best as we can, but sometimes they are going to fall during a week where we've already got three things and it makes it a four day week. Um, but again, we're really going to try to focus on keeping it to three days. Speaking of other sporting events, I want to acknowledge Title IX, which is that we do our best to equally support boys and girls athletics at our school. Um, so in addition to football and basketball, we like to support all other types of teams throughout the season. Um, so we go, just an example, we go to gymnastics, wrestling, girls and boys soccer, cross country, um, baseball, all kinds of things. We also go to unified soccer and unified bowling as well. And it's just a great way for us to show our support for all different types of athletes. Um, and they appreciate us being there as well. So um, the girls have a lot of fun going to all of these different events. Um, in terms of cheer leadership camp, here is your update with that. Um, so this year, as I said, it was supposed to be July 27th through the 31st at Central Washington University. But unfortunately, they've kind of had to restructure camp and this is kind of no longer going to be an option. But they are, they are offering an alternative option, which is called the three day commuter camp, um, where the NCA or uh, National Cheerleaders Association and the leadership staff that host the typical camp we go to are actually coming out to either our school or schools near us, um, TBD on that. But they're bringing all of that awesome curriculum right to us and I mean, if you talk to any of the girls who were on the team last year or any year for that matter, I think they would all say that cheer camp is one of the best parts of our season. And with that being said, I know that this is gonna look different this year, but I can guarantee you that that's the staff that's coming out to us is going to make it an equally amazing camp experience. And I know that it's going to be so much fun still and we're going to gain so much from it. So um, definitely something to look forward to still. Of course, kind of depending on the phases and the restrictions, the goal is for us to participate in this with another team, um, but possibly uh, it might just be our team. For sure, it'll but just be our team. Um, dates are of course TBD, but I'm really hoping to do this at the end of summer if we are able to. Moving on to some of our other requirements. Um, leadership class is a big one. First semester is required and second semester is optional, but highly encouraged. Um, I just think that there's such a great liaison between leadership class and um, our cheer program. I think they work closely together and I think having that connection is huge and is only going to make us stronger cheerleaders. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with leadership class. In terms of running start, our principal did approve full-time running start as long as you still take that first semester leadership class at Inglemore. I know we've got a lot of girls who do um, running start right now, so no need to worry. That's kind of clearing the air on that. Um, jumping into kind of what parent involvement looks like, I think this is a big one that um, should be addressed. We have a few opportunities in which we love to get our parents involved and just kind of want to let you know what you can expect in some ways that you can possibly get involved um, once the team has been selected. So like I've mentioned a few times, our previous teams really, really thrive off of that team bonding aspect. And especially given the current circumstances, I think that team bonding is gonna be extra, extra important this year. So just to kind of touch on some of the traditions that we typically hold, um, we host team dinners before football games and Jen and I are hoping to carry this into basketball season this year as well. Um, we do some team sleepovers, some pool days, some beach days, some go grab, some froyo. Uh, the one thing with team bonding that I want to mention is that that's actually something that the coaches can't organize. So it's kind of cool because it gives anybody on the team the opportunity to step up and work with their parents to kind of come up with different ways to get everyone involved and create these fun spaces for everyone to get to know each other better. And we also have a holiday party and an end of the season party. And we'll typically make some of these potluck style where we'll have families uh, sign up to bring a different appetizer, dessert, or drink to share with everyone. And we have plenty of food to go around. And in terms of things like the team dinners, I send out just a simple sign up sheet and with all of the dates and times outlined and parents can just go in, drop their name, drop their address. Um, and then it's super easy for everyone to know where they're going on what game. And the girls love the team dinners, especially I know that a lot of bonding happens there. So they're really fun. 
And then one other way that parents can get involved is sometimes we have ask for help with our fundraisers. So a big example would be the car wash, which typically happens in the spring. Fingers crossed that we can do it at the end of summer. Uh, but that's a big one where, again, I send out a sign-up sheet. Families can go in and we all come together to bring everything that's necessary to hold a giant car wash. And it's also a way that some parents can sign up to help in shifts um, and two parents get to know each other better. Coaches get to know two parents better. I think it's a really fun way to um, further bond and create a stronger program that way. And in terms of some other expectations, um, abiding by the leadership and athletic code is kind of another big one. And that kind of in summary means no alcohol, no drugs, no vaping. You're not really in the presence of anyone doing it. Pretty straightforward there. Um, and then grades, I know Jen kind of touched on this earlier, but the standard is a 2.0 and no Fs maintained throughout the current school year. And then that 2.8 cumulative uh, must be had and able to try out for cheer. In terms of our attendance policy, a general statement is that you must attend at least half of the school day in order to be eligible to participate on any given in any given event, whether that be a practice, a special event like a little bikes camp um, or any sort of game. You must attend at least half of the school day and that the same thing goes even if you're um, on campus for college classes. Uh, same thing. You have to attend at least half of the school day. And kind of tying into that, we've got what we call the care card. Um, and it's kind of like a punch card system that we use. I'll show it to you. It's gonna, it might look a little backwards, but just so you kind of get the gist of how we track attendance and um, such. So we've got two kind of different sections. So the first one covers conduct and appearance. So obviously um, we track, I mean, this doesn't really ever happen, but like negative Speaking negatively to your teammates or your coaches, um, just negative behavior in general, that'll get tracked under conduct. And then appearance would be um, if you are not wearing the correct hair bow or you show up and your hair isn't done in the correct style or you're wearing the wrong uniform piece, the wrong jacket, things like that. Um, so that's kind of what goes in that section. And then the second section is for practice and participation. So there is where we're tracking if you're tardy, um, if you're absent, and obviously no one's perfect. Sometimes something's gonna come up. We're gonna have to, where you're gonna be running later, you're gonna have to miss something. And that's why we give you, it's not just one and done. We give you quite a few um, checks, but it's just a way for us to kind of hold everybody accountable and just kind of keep track of everybody. So that's the details on the punch card system. And I'll have Jen kind of jump into what to expect going into trial week. Yeah, so I think this is one of the things that the girls are going to want to know most about, but um, some exciting information about our tryout week when we get the green light to go. Um, date and time, obviously, we're still waiting to hear from the higher ups, um, but there will be a tryout week for sure. So there'll be an actual Monday through Friday week long tryout process, and that's to offer all the candidates, whether they're returning or they're brand new, to have equal opportunity just to work with each other, to ask the coaches questions, to you know, fine tune their technique or work on those jumps or cheers or whatever that they're, they're struggling with. And so we wanna make sure you know you will have a full week um, regardless of whenever we are given the green light. Um, tryouts are gonna be um, basically Monday through Thursday, we're gonna be learning the material and we're gonna be practicing and then the actual tryout will be that Friday. We do still, same thing, want you to wear a white t-shirt and black shorts, that will be kind of the tryout ensemble. And then, um, the daily practices are very important, but they're not mandatory. So if for some reason you can't make one of the practices, that is okay. There's no points deducted for you. Um, but just make sure you let us know that because we want to make sure we know who, who we're expecting for each day. Um, and it's just really helpful if we have an idea of that going into the day, not just finding out the day of. Um, we'll be reviewing lots and lots of information um, and the material will only be taught once. So it's really important, again, if you can make all five days, well, four, because the fifth is the trial. But if you can make the previous four days, Monday through Thursday, it's really helpful um, so that you get all that information firsthand. But uh, we will be sending out some videos of the material for you to learn and practice at home. And that way, if you have something you can't remember exactly which move was next, you can go back and reference. Some of the material that's already on YouTube for you to start learning now, so that's not all brand new for you when you come into tryout, is our fight song is already on YouTube. Um, you can search Inglemore High School Cheer and you can pull it up. It's a long video. The fight song's at the very end. Um, but we'll make sure that's on the Google Classroom as well. So the fight song you can start learning ahead of time. 
And that way it's just one less piece you have to try one the week of. There will be brand new cheers and routines for everyone to learn. So even people that are returning from last season, they're gonna have brand new, or brand new material to be learning as well. So everybody's kind of on the level playing ground there. Uh, but make sure you take the time to learn um, the fight song so that when you're adding in the new components the week of cheer, it's not so much for you to try and take on yourself. A general breakdown of the week, Monday we're gonna be doing the dance and the cheers from primarily um, along with basic motions and jumps. On Tuesday, we're going to be working on the fight song. On Wednesday, lots of review. And Thursday, we're going to do more review and then also hold a mock tryout so you can experience what it's going to be like for Friday. Friday will be your official tryout day. Um, the format that we're going with and that we're hoping is that we're going to be outside. Um, I think this makes the most sense and will probably be the most logical um, possibility that we have. But uh, we're going to have a panel of judges both from the school, from Inglemore High School, and then also from the cheer community. So COVID pending, we're hoping that, um, that we're going to be able to place you in groups of probably three or a small group that you can practice with, perform with, that those would be kind of your little buddies going through the tryout process. Um, if that's not possible and you have to try out solo, then just prepare yourself for that, but we are going to try and be able to put you in small groups. Um, Coaches will be present, but we don't actually complete any scoring sheets. We get all of the um, scoring cards from the judges. So we'll be there. We'll be there to support you guys and, and all of that, but uh, we won't be doing the scoring ourselves. And then we are still working on finalizing that scoring rubric. So it's looking at that it's going to be about a 50-40 split. So the actual tryout will hold 60% of your score, and then the 40% will come from the paperwork and the video submissions that you sent to us. Um, so that kind of wraps up what to expect for tryouts. And then McKenzie's going to talk a little bit about the cost of cheer and what to expect this year. Okay, so yes, kind of the last huge piece that I wanted to cover in this video is the cost of cheer. And I just want you all to know that we recognize that cheer is not cheap. And this, this is definitely an investment. Um, I will say a few things. All, all of the expenses for the year, most of them are going to be um, pretty much up front. We do try to space them out a bit, um, and you will also get super good use of all of your items. I mean, from practice wear to obviously uniforms, the shoes, um, everything is worn pretty much the entire season. So, and then they get to hang on to all of those pieces forever. So, um, all of those specifics were kind of outlined in terms of like, I provided a quote if you did get the chance to pick up a hard copy before everything closed, um, but, Speaking of that quote, I kind of wanted to touch on where we're at in the uniform ordering process and how we work with um, our vendor, which is Varsity Fashions. So typically we get in a uniform every two years and this year it was supposed to be new uniform year. Um, but kind of the process of how we order is we usually have our trial in March and then we hold our uniform fittings in April. We get that order placed right then and there in April, and then we don't actually see any of our pieces until July, right before we go to camp. Um, so it does it does take quite a bit of time to get all of the things to us, which is ex which is like I completely understand, um, especially because pretty much every single high school, college, and rec program that I know of throughout the country uses Varsity to get all of their pieces. All of it's customizable. Of of course and so it does take quite a bit of time to get those pieces out to us um so kind of taking that into account um jen and i have kind of needed to reevaluate where we're at with uniform perching and kind of our game plan going forward um, and like i said that original quote attached literally included every single thing for the whole season coming from basically just one place which was varsity but kind of just to keep you in the loop of where our thoughts are right now nothing's finalized we're just kind of seeing how things play out in terms of timing and everything um but one thing we're kind of thinking about doing for football season is using a uniform that we already have from last year um, because we will have some returners that are already going to have that uniform. Thus, we'll only need to order that for the new girls. So it'll be a much smaller order than ordering it for the whole team. Um, the kind of key point I want to touch on there is that it's kind of a rule for us that uh, the entire team on the sidelines, the entire cheer team needs to be in uniform in order to be cheering. So we've got to all have something that matches. Um, kind of going off of that is the idea of getting a few t-shirts and a simple black skirt uh, from some local vendors here that I know of. 
um, and kind of gathering some other warm up bottoms and piecing together some outfits on our own, not through varsity, and just kind of getting those ordered online so that we can have those in time to be uniform on the sidelines and uniform at practices while we're waiting for our uniform to come in. And then going back to that whole new uniform rotation, because it is a new uniform year, there is also, Jen and I have thought about um, still ordering one new uniform and maybe it doesn't come in time for football season, but having it ready for basketball season could kind of be something fun to tie into the second half of our season as well. So those are just some of our ideas. Again, it's all kind of timing dependent, but just to keep you all in the loop. And once our team is selected, we will um, be able to give you even more information, hopefully. And kind of going off of that, um, that quote, again, if you were able to take a look at it, it is a big, big chunk of money. Um, typically the total cost of cheer in general comes to, comes out to a bit under $2,000. But this year due to kind of COVID and everything, it's looking like it's gonna be significantly less with these adjustments that we're working on. Um, and again, I just, I wanna say, we do acknowledge that it is gonna, that it is an investment and it is um, expensive for sure. I just wanna to touch again on the fact that you do get to keep almost every single thing that you are purchasing and it is made custom for each person. Um, and some of the pieces do get to um, be reused uh, throughout the years to come as well. And the other big cost that comes with cheer is typically cheer camp. This year it was set to be $415 per girl. And this is usually what the bulk of our fundraising money goes towards. So now with the commuter camp option, the cost is down to about $185 per person for the three day camp experience. So although we have lost um, a lot of our springtime fundraising opportunities, my hope is that we can still incorporate those into kind of later in the summer uh, or in the early fall. And um, that cost for that three day camp is significantly cheaper than the original, what the original cost would look like. So that's another way that we're kind of cutting, things are gonna be significantly less expensive this year um, in comparison to previous years. And in terms of fundraising opportunities and how we are gonna kind of navigate that throughout the year, that's something that I'm super, I love fundraising. So it's something I'm super open to talking with um, all of our parents once our team is selected and kind of brainstorming and um, stuff like that. So that's something else that we'll touch on more once our team is selected. But that pretty much sums up kind of the cost portion and everything that we wanted to touch on in this packet. Um, so I really hope that you found this video useful and valuable, and I hope that this did answer some maybe questions that you did have. But again, um, that Google form is worth five points of your tryout score. So please, please take some time to fill it out with your parent or guardian and drop any questions that you still have. And Jen and I will get back to both um, cheerleader and parent with the best response that we've got uh, in, at this current time. Um, and girls, please be checking the Google Classroom often, as well as your school email. That's where we're going to be providing updates moving forward. And it doesn't hurt to also follow our Instagram page. We do post updates on there as well. It is at Inglemore Cheer if you don't follow it already. Um, but with that being said, that's pretty much all that I have got to say. We look so forward to seeing you all at trial week. Um, Jen, anything else you want to add? No, we're just so excited to get this season going. Yes, I, I totally agree. I think it's going to be great. And like I said, we're looking so forward to um, meeting you all super soon, hopefully. Um, so thank you guys. I hope everyone stays healthy and safe and um, we'll talk with you again soon. Bye. Bye.